It is a great pleasure because it is Tel Aviv that I see that I really, really love. And, um, and it is fun because it's much bigger than what I thought it is. Um, they talk to me about on the phone and let's go and have, a, we'll talk a little bit and then uh, just to say a few words. And I said a few words and, I, and we started a little bit of ping pong of, of what's going to be. And then at one point we met in my office. Rega. And at one point we met in my office. It's the technology, it's fantastic. <laughs> um, in, uh, at Israel Valley, it's the new office. And, um, and, and then I, I did my homework finally, and then I looked up what the hell is Creative Mornings, and I said, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do more homework. <laughs> it's bigger than what it is. So I, I said, okay, I, it has to still, I mean, I'm not gonna back up. Um, but uh, again, it, it is something that I, I find it that, that is a, it's a challenge. It also, because I'm, I'm a dancer, or I'm used to do with my, deal with my body for the past 40 some years. So it was a nice thing to switch and to go into mind, 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 mind search and soul searching and see what is it that I actually would like to say in, a, in an opportunity like this. Um, but before all that, or after all of that, uh, I was also interested in what the hell am I going to wear for all this? Because I know, we know what Natalie wears now. <laughs> All of Creative Mornings is green, but at 7.30 in the morning or 8.30 in the morning in a city that never sleeps, it sleeps at 8.30 in the morning and nobody's ever out there. So I said, the hell, what am I going to put? I, I wanted to put a pyjama, my wife didn't let me out of the house. <laughs> so I, I said, okay, I, I, I have to, let's see, like I would go to work. And I see that many of you like you go to work and then you, we, we go to work sometimes in flip-flops and sometimes in a suit, it's Tel Aviv. Um, so, so here I am, and here we are, and I think it's really cool, and thank you very much for coming, and let's have a croissant and let's go home. <laughs> no, no. Um, apropos croissant, um, because I'm coming from dance, I, I couldn't help but notice that we were eating a lot of croissants and pastry, which is a lot of calories. So what I would like you to try, to maybe to start with, is let's dance a little bit. Okay, it's not gonna, we're gonna dance twice today. This is the first time, this is just a warming up. It's not really, but it's basic necessity for what's gonna be later on. Because what later on is gonna be is, it's all about the, the thing, action. Um, so let, let's, we can, at this moment we can sit and dance. Okay, ah, no, no, Natalie says stand up and dance. So stand up and dance, I'll sit and stand up. But it's just like really simple dancing. Reach your arms side, forward, Mati, forward. Okay? With palms down. We're going to talk of basic principles of, of um, at, at all, just being. Now, lift your palms up and then try to feel what the hell is the difference between what you're doing now. If you're going down, facing downwards, and what would it be if you're facing upwards. If you do this to the side and you're going to do it to your, the one next to you, but it's like that. Okay, I'm doing down. What is it that you feel when you're facing downwards with your palms and how do you feel when you're facing upwards? I mean, I'm trying to cheat a little bit. I'm trying to give you, you can go still forward. It's okay. Or <laughs> backwards or all those games. I mean, they're all, but the thing is that feel what is it that you are here and what is it where you are here? Because there is this is actually a moving valley, I'll talk to you in a second, but this one down is down, and the up is somehow f makes me feel up a little bit. It's something that this way I would go there, and that way I would go there. And I can put your hands down, and you've been through your first ballet class. <laughs> I think this is the difference, this is one of the differences between classical ballet and modern dance is that we are, have a seat, that we are, heavy down in, class, in, in modern dance, and we are grounded and we are earthbound. And in classical ballet, it's all about elevation and all about up and air. And basically the one thing, the, how, the whole thing it uh, was born 
uh, from out of the Italian Renaissance and then the French Renaissance and the French court and Louis XIV and the whole academy, uh, the first ballet academy, is, um, is, is that they started slowly, the ladies started slowly going on point shoes and they elevated and they got out of this world and that this is how they became the sylphids, the, the fairies, the, all this that's above us. It's not something that is not ordinary. And uh, whereas ordinary is also okay, and whereas ordinary is also, um, um, and that modern dance is not necessarily that is ordinary, not at all, because it's really cool and exci exciting, and these ups and downs. And um, but it's a completely different thing. It's I mean, whereas in modern dance, I would say that we are really connected to what's down there in the earth, and it all grows out of that. In uh, in classical ballet, I think we are really connected to something up there, and this is where we wish to be, and this is why all the dancers are really slim and tall, and and also because they don't eat croissants. <laughs> but I don't want to uh, get into that anymore. I will not remind you that moment, this thing anymore. Uh, it's very good, by the way. So it's to elevate. Yeah, we, we removed the first. Line should be just because of you, that there was nobody at the front. Yeah, that's what I think. Can I have the carry on? Let's all pick ourselves up and move yeah. like a meter. Yeah. Ah, or I can go we forward. This was a real creative morning thing. <laughs> <laughs> Only in Tel Aviv. Um, so I hope that, apropos only in Tel Aviv, I hope that you know that we are one of the best cities in the world. And I can tell this from a place where, I, first of all, I've been around. Second of all, I wasn't born here. So I, I, I kind of came in. I was imported here um, um, a long, long time ago. But, um, but I can really, as an outsider, once I can say that this is really one of the best cities in the world. It's wet, it's hot, it's loud, it's ugly, it's just great. <laughs> It's, uh, I don't know, it's a city of, of, uh, of so many things and so much contradictions and so many, in a country that there's so much contradictions, but um, it's somehow unexplainable, but it's really cool. It's maybe the beach, maybe the beach, maybe the sun, maybe the size, that it's not too big, not too small, it's kind of easy to access, but, but uh, you don't feel that you are in a village. Um, maybe that you see faces that you would like to see sometimes on the street, and then maybe that you actually meet a lot of new people and here we are, a lot of new people. Maybe it's the equivalent of modern dance. Um, okay. Not Definitely not. <laughs> but we will talk about that later. <laughs> Very true, though. Um, maybe that is full of barbarians and then full of culture. The barbarians wasn't for you. <laughs> it's full of barbarians, but full of culture at the same time. Um, and again, we are talking about contradictions. M maybe that you can walk on the street and you can hear from out of a window a pianist practicing at home. Um, and this really nice classical music comes out and then maybe the, in the next corner you will see these techno juice popping out of the van and they go boom 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 until the light goes green and then they run back and they go they drive off um, it's maybe that you can enjoy this city even if you're poor and even if you're rich you can feel that you belong because because it has very many different layers um, and not every city has that really around the world it's a city where the sea, the synagogue, the mosque, and the church are a five minutes walk from each other and from here probably. The beach definitely, even less. Um, and where every given night we can go out and, have a, and choose between a hundred different cultural events and many of them actually very good. Um, and that's a, that's a nice place to be at, if you, that you have so many options and you just, okay, I'll pick to stay home. But I can pick also to go to the opera and to go do many, many, many interesting things. It's a city where you can have the two o'clock in the morning or at 12 o'clock at night um, uh, breakfast in Benedict and in other places. This is not for uh, Pirsoma. Uh, but it's a city also where you can walk around at two o'clock in a bikini top and a hundred shekels in your hand and nobody's gonna, no harm is gonna come to you. Because again, about something to do with a city of contradictions or a country of contradictions, but definitely Tel Aviv, is that we are at war most of the time, even though sometimes bombs are falling now lately. And, uh, or a year ago, and uh, it's somehow the safest city in the world. I've been again around, and it, after nine o'clock, you start to be a little bit in Frankfurt or in Budapest or in, in other places. And here in Tel Aviv, it's just the 24 hours, and it's just good. It's it, it very welcoming and, again, very safe. Funny to think about it, that 
in one of the, they are in a war zone if you look at it from CNN. They are living in the place that is really not, and this is one of the safest cities. Uh, I think it's also to do something with the energy that is so much energy of the new, because the country is new, the city is new, but the city is older than the country, but, <laughs> but the, 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 the city is still new, so we are, we are the one and you are the ones that are actually creating the, in the dance world or in the theater world, we have this the phantom of the opera. In the theaters, they have this, this, the smell, the, the something that is happening without the director wanting to know about it or wanting to do about it. And uh, I think we are the ones that are creating this, this phantom of the opera. So whenever I go into a new theater or whenever I dance, the, as a dancer somewhere, um, it was always, I'm, I'm not just in a hundred years, I'm not just another guy, but I'm one of the guys that they actually will remember. Um, and again, it's something that it's, that is, that's to do with, with us and it's nothing to do with maybe another city that is already hundreds and thousands of years old and then, okay, we, you are just the other European guy there. Um, so again, it's just a great city and I'm really happy to be here and i really be, be happy that, that you are also here with me and we, and we can all uh, kind of celebrate that. I'm not sponsored by Ron Holday, but I just really like Tel Aviv. Um, some are born here and some are drawn here. I was imported 20 years ago. Uh, I was to be a dancer, as we heard it, um, to be a dancer to Israel Ballet. And um, the Israel Ballet is, is one of the three biggest companies in Israel. It's Bacheva Dance Company, it's a kibbutz contemporary dance company in the Israel Ballet. Uh, it is measured by all different numbers and all different uh, ways, how, what is big and what is not. But um, it's basically the size, the, the, the money they, they make, the money they get from the government. Uh, but it's a company of 20, 30 dancers, uh, plus minus. Uh, and it's the only classical company of all the big ones and all the other companies, actually, of dance companies in Israel. Uh, that is putting up classical ballet productions. You can see a Cinderella, or you can see a, a, a Nutcracker. Um, funnily enough, in, in uh, at the Israel Ballet, you can see Nutcracker, which is everywhere in the world, the holiday season, the, the Christmas season, in, uh, from New York to San Francisco, through Paris and everywhere. So it's Nutcracker, Nutcracker, Nutcracker. Then here in June and July, actually, the Israel Ballet, we just performed Nutcracker uh, not long ago with the snowfall, with everything that needs to be. It's Damn it, we don't have snow in Tel Aviv in any way, so it's why not in July. Um, um, so this is, this is the, the company of, of uh, where I was born, where I was drawn to, I was uh, imported to. Um, and I came for one year. I said, oh, I was going to be an adventure, I'm going to try, why just not, let's see what Tel Aviv uh, is about. And, and I guess also for a normal Hungarian guy that was good enough to be imported, um, I was, the obvious step would have been Europe. It's Germany, Holland, England, one of those places. And I said that I wanted something else. I wanted to go away for a year, maybe two, and I'll come back and I will have all this knowledge that none of all those have because they went to the other direction and I went to this direction. Um, and so it was one year. I asked for a sick leave or for a without payment leave uh, from the company that I was working previously, Durabali in Hungary, and um, one year. In two days, and it's really literally two days, on the 15th of August, I'm going to be here. It's the anniversary of the 20th year, 20 years anniversary that I arrived to Israel. Um, actually, when you think about it, it's emotional. When I was writing all these things, you don't, again, when there's no creative mornings, you don't think, okay, I just organized another day, also 15th of August. You don't think of these, these uh, milestones, and then suddenly, thank you again, that <laughs> I actually had to think about it and actually had to, God damn it, it's 20 years, <laughs> and it's now, and my mother is coming. <laughs> anyway, um, I remember another thing about this is that about 14 years ago, I was already a dancer at Israel Bali. I was one of the principal dancers. I was doing a lot, and I was doing it again a lot, and so on, and I looked right and looked left, and I felt I got to the kind of to the top, and I felt that I needed to change, and I said, okay, I'll, 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 go, I'll need to go somewhere else. And, um, and I, said my, I gave my notice to the, to the director and I said, thank you very much. And I packed my bags and I said, everything that I'm, I was doing, it was July. Everything I'm doing now, I'm doing it for the last time. And I performed in the Opera House, in the Tel Aviv Opera House, a very prestigious place, um, prestigious role and everything. And I was in clap and everything. And I was saying, okay, this is, I'm doing it for the last time. And I went to uh, eat, uh, back then there was only one Glida place, the Glida Siciliana, I think. It was, it was the place that you eat Glida. So I went there and I ate ice cream. I said, this is the last time I do, I'm doing this. 
and I remember this very much, that I walked through Kikar Rabin, the Rabin Square, and I said, I'm doing this for the last time. And every time I felt sad, every time I said that I'm doing this for the last time, I felt sad. And little by little or slowly, I kind of understood that, that, um, that I belong here. There is something else that I, that it's, it's not about the new, it's not about the fresh. There is a lot of new and fresh in here. And I felt that I don't want to feel sad anymore. And I said, okay, I will stay. I understood that this is where I, where I somehow this is where I belong. Um, it's a city where I was not born to, like many of you or some of you, but it is a city that I was somehow born, uh, somehow drawn to. It's a city that, that I, back then 14 years ago, and I think ever since, every day, I make a conscious action of choice, of choosing the city that this is where I want to be. I'm in a job that I could actually do this really everywhere art and, and, and dance and all these spheres is, is something that is very uh, exportable, importable, you can walk around with that. And, and, uh, and I said, no, this is where I want to be. I want to be in Tel Aviv, this is where I, where I feel that I belong and this is where I feel that I can create something that is, that is bigger than just being me and just doing the normal, usual stuff and living a normal life. Um, and the, just recently I closed the very big 20. This big 20, well, in two, 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 two days I was born here. But um, for 10 years I was, like we said, I was at Disra Bali and I was one of the principal dancers and it was very nice and, and so on and so on. And then 10 years after I stopped and I created a new, con new uh, career, I went into teaching, choreographing and uh, directing. Um, and this took me away from the company completely. I was there 10 years and I was away for 10 years. And then this Sunday, four days ago, I was, I just started my first season as artistic director of this company. Um, I don't really believe in these numbers of 10, 10, 10, 10, but it was like, it's again, it's something that is, would be silly not to kind of still understand or make mark of it that this is, it's not usual, I think, that it was 10 years there, 10 years away, and this closes the 20 years that I'm here, and here, I'm, here I am, and I went back uh, to where I kind of was born to uh, or drawn to in Israel. Um, so it's, it's also something that is very, that for me, when, when I was writing all these things, it was very emotional and very, not, very much to, I think it's to notice and to, to make note of it. Um, I already flipped it. Um, it's, and I flipped it because it's right. I had to flip it, very good. It's funny that in the framework of the Creative Mornings, speech, I'm going to say what I'm going to say now, but generally feel, and I'll be going to the, a little bit into the body of what I want to talk about, uh, generally feel that we talk too much and, too, too, and do too, too little. Did it switch? Ah, that was the Tel Aviv one. Um, talk less, do more. This is what's o occupying my mind lately, or disturbing my mind lately, it depends on how you wake up. Um, in my world, dance, and in particular classical ballet, um, there is dancing with all the beauty and all the elements of, uh, all the technical elements and the bravours and the jumps and the turns and the flips and the lifts and the, all the action. And then there is the, what we call, mise-en-scene, staging, um, what we call in ballet, pantomime or talking. Um, it is the not dancing part of it, therefore the no action part of it. Um, and it's the one that is sometimes in classical ballet and it doesn't exist in any of the other art forms, uh, uh, any other of the dance forms, that we are, it's a bit silly. A very good friend of mine reminded me of this of this, what mise-en-scene is, is one of the greatest ballerinas on earth. It's called Sylvie Guillem. Um, she is, um, she's French obviously, and she's really one of the superstars and, and so on. There's no pictures of her in this presentation, but there, she was one of the phenomenal uh, dancers. She calls it calling the cab. Stop there, stop there. It's, it's not dancing, it's just doing these kind of silly things when you kind of talk on stage, but you don't, 
you don't actually dance, you don't actually need any technique for that, even though this is a technique and even this is... When I'm on stage, or when they are, when we are on stage in classical ballet, that we still have to tell a story, and to tell a story you can't do it in dancing. Um, you have to always do, kind of pantomime this, this is the I love you, or how would you say you're so pretty in ballet? Don't, if you, if you know that, yeah, 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 I, I see their stuff. Not, not bad. What, what did you just do? Okay, that was, but you, you were, you're selling it to a man, you are. <laughs> in classical ballet, this wouldn't work. It, only the man says to the girl that you are so pretty. And that was right. Or, or how, do you, how would you say, I swear, no, I know that I swear, I, 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 but uh, I swear as in I, I, I promise. Okay, so you are the answer. <laughs> oh, uh, inside all of us are. It's uh, Romeo and Juliet, it's this. It's this, I promise, I swear we're gonna live forever and die together, and they did. Um, how do you say no? <laughs> No, that's the kinky no. That's in Tel Aviv, in a Tel Aviv bar. It's a <laughs> no, in ballet, also this big... I mean, think about it. It's the opera house. You are not, you are not sitting two meters from me. You are standing 30 meters from the dancer. So even at the back, and there's 50 meters on the top of the gallery, they have to see it. So no, no would be... That's what the girl says, by the way. <laughs> Always. You're so pretty. No. I know what you want, no. <laughs> um, it's not so, um, it, it, I mean, these things are simple, but how do you say, um, oh, we are here in Tel Aviv now and it's so beautiful. <laughs> you can't, this is the thing with classical ballet and this is where, where with, te with talking in classical ballet is that you can't do that. There is as much intellectual stuff that you can, that you can, this is how much intellectual it gets, you're pretty. <laughs> um, which is actually obviously not true, but there's a different depth to it and a different meaning to all these things that we do in classical ballet. Uh, but there is, that you can't really tell a real story unless there is all the music and all the things, of course there are, but it's not, you can't say it intellectually, really words. It goes through the heart, it goes through the, you see something really nice, something really elevated, the girl on point, the girl on tutu, uh, and she's turning and she's up in the air and then she comes down and she says, no. You get two plus one plus one together, no, this guy, this guy is not the one, so there has to be another guy in the story, otherwise it's going to be really boring. Um, nowadays, I'm preparing my first big production with Isra Bale, um, which is called, it's my superhero, she's a girl. Her name is Raimonda. Um, it's... It's a ballet that is over 100 years old. It's a ballet that is over two and a half hours long. It's Russian, as most of the uh, stories slash ballets back then by Mario Spetipa, one of the most famous and biggest classical, ba uh, classical choreographers. And, um, and I'm doing a production and I'm thinking, okay, how we're gonna do it, what we're gonna do and what's going on. Now in this piece, it's extremely beautiful music. Uh, Glazunov is just one of the most beautiful musics for, for, for ballet. When we think of classical ballet, we mostly think of Tchaikovsky because mo it's true that he's the one who wrote most of the music for that. Back then commissioned for the Swan Lake and for the Nutcracker and so on and so on. Um, and somehow this mu music is just beautiful. It's amazing music. And then one of the reasons why it didn't really survive, or didn't, not, not didn't survive, but it didn't really make to fame like Swan Lake and the Nutcracker and so on in ballet, because there is a lot of talking in it. From the two and a half hours, it's almost an hour and a half of mise-en-scene of all these, no, I don't, you come here, I'll kill you. And all this, this is what's going on and there is no bravours, no dancing, no, not the reason why you come in to see a ballet. Definitely not in 2015. So one of the things is what I'm doing is, is taking, because of dancing again equals action in all this uh, thing, still dancing equals action. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm trying to fix, fit it into Israel, the Israel Ballet and Israel in 2015. And what I'm doing is I'm taking all the talking out and leaving all the action, all the dancing, all the non-talking in. Um, and I think 
this is really important part of it because otherwise it's not, you're not going to come and you're going to pay the 300 shekels in the opera house to come and see Raimonda, even if she's beautiful and even if she's done very well, but you're not going to do it because it's, at, at one point it's going to be boring. Um, again, in this one, I am also trying to put this principle that we'll talk less, I'll talk soon less, we'll talk less and, and do more uh, because I think, um, oh, it went really fast. So I'll talk faster then. Um, because somehow I feel that action is really relevant in 2015, also in our age, it's not just today, but, and talking is on the way, is, is, is okay. Um, we live in a fast city and we live a very fast rhythm. It's the, it's the bigger, better, faster, more time. I don't know if you remember the song of the, and I say, die, 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 die. I don't, don't sing this while I'm in dancing, don't worry. Um, and, and we live in the just do it. Um, and it's, it, it, I mean, it's really about go, 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 and not just talk about it. And I have a theory of a theory of 100. Ta-da! To achieve something, it takes 100 units. 100 units of, let's say, energy, or 100 units of whatever you want to call it. You can obviously divide it by 50-50 or I don't remember the other number. 40, 60, or what else can be? 30, 70, uh, or 10, 90, but in the end it has to be 100. Um, and 100 is, you can talk 50, you can do 50, or you can talk 90 and do 10, but at some point there has to be some doing in it, some action in it. And it's somehow in my, it's not only in my world, it's a more like experience, the big, the big experience I have in life, that the more you do, no, the less you talk, the more you do, and then, then therefore the more you achieve. Um, so I think the little message, one of the little messages that I think that, that we would, should come out of here today is a hundred is, is a good thing and do a hundred. Talk less, just do more. I often say it at home as well. <laughs> and, um, or it should be the, the message, but, um, but again, I think it's really important that we are we are more in the action rather than the, and apropos, this is quite relevant to action, today's uh, world. As a creative leader and, and artistic director, or as we call it, artistic director in, in my field, I'm advocating these three disciplines, these three basic uh, disciplines in the world. Is discipline, uh, uh, these three basic principles in the world is discipline, elegance, and good manners. Um, these are, if you can come to think of it as a, pretty classical values and then classical ballet, so it makes kind of sense with me, because of um, discipline for me, but I guess for everybody, it gives a great grip on life. It gives a great control over what do we do and how do we do and, and uh, not to get lost in the everyday. Um, elegance, for me, I found it that it puts me somehow in tune with the rhythm of, of life. It puts me into a place where I kind of, let things happen. I don't fight, 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 and, and I just go. I'm also not one of those persons. I'm, I let things come to me, and I, when, when I'm ready, and when he's ready, then it just happens. And, um, and, I, guess, and I guess it happens, because I, um, I, I, one, the reason why we're standing here now is one of the reasons is because of these rabbis. So things all the, on the way through, uh, even if only for the last 20 years, but maybe more, it just... Um, things still came to me. And uh, it's very yoga, by the way. Um, the, and the last thing is, uh, and, and in elegance, I think also there's something that you don't really sweat for it. In, in sweating, I sweat in the discipline part. I do work very hard for, or we work very hard for getting it. But then once it's there, then it's just there. And it's just a hug. And it's not that I, I have to push it. There is a very good friend of mine. He's, um, He's a writer, Hungarian writer, living in Hungary and in, and in Israel. Um, and he wrote quite a, nice, a lot of nice books. His name is Paul Solomon, uh, Shalomon Pal. And he, he, in one of his books, he wrote that, that uh, life doesn't like if, it, if you force it. Um, there's something about it is that if you really like trying to push something, even if you, I mean, it's, I think it's enough to put the energy out and to see where I'm going and what I want to be. And then at one point, I, the only person who didn't put his phone off is me. <laughs> it's my wife now. Um, 
So, um, so it's, it, you put the energy out, it will come. And if you write, really fight for it and you really want to do it now, I want to do it now, 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 I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, with me, it didn't work. I mean, me, with me, actually, it worked the opposite. I really wanted something, and in the very end, it didn't work out. And that was very good that it didn't work out. So this is where, for me, elegance in it, of course, all with dancing and the long lines and all that, this, of course, is built in already. And good manners is the other thing. I just, um, good manners is just nice. I think it's just nice to, to talk to people in a nice way and not to be rude and also... As a director, I try to apply this discipline, even if it's now getting really hard. Um, and uh, because it also paves the road. It paves the road that we walk. It's, it's about, um, because this life thing is not about getting there. Once you're there, then you're done. It's about walking the road. And you're walking the road, then it's nice to be nicer. It's nice to talk to people and then just smile and, and, and like, like and be liked. Um, I remember this in, in Friends, there's Joy says, actually Joy says, when he's listening to all these, these tapes of, of uh, I think, on a woman's way, you don't want to be, it's something that is talking to him in a, in, in a, that like he is a woman at night to, I don't know what, what it is, to put him in alpha and then to, what's the situation, you remember? Stop, quit talk, smoking? No, not smoking. I about the smoking. So then... So then at, at some point there is like a, a fight or whatever and he, and he says, um, and he says it's, uh, it's not what he said, it's how he said it. So it's, it's not only a lady's uh, thing anymore, first of all, but second of all, it's, it is really, it's about not, not what we do, it's also what we do obviously, but it's about how we do it, about how we go through all this, is how we, how we manage to get from one to, to, to the last one, but again, still be nice, it's a nicer way. Um, to get there and it's about basically when it gets down to this then it's about how we take the actions that we take every day just be nice a little bit nicer and it's in t in definitely in Israel and maybe in Tel Aviv even more it's quite relevant I would say it's a fast city it's, we are really being in a fast world but uh, I remember again 20 years ago, I started walking on the streets and I was walking and then I was walking this and that because I tried to go around the people that are just walking straight. And I'm standing by um, looking at the Zara whatever shop, and, uh, that wasn't Zara back then, uh, the whatever, Moshe Zuchmel's shop. <laughs> and uh, from here and then just in front of me just stands another guy and it looks the same thing. There's something really rude about it and something really not, not no manners and no, uh, no good manners definitely. Um, so at some point I started walking straight and I said that I'm 190 centimeters tall and almost, I don't know, 80 kilos. Back then I was probably less a little bit, but you will start going right and left. I will go straight. But, but it's still, I, I try to do this with a smile. <laughs> so that when they bump off, then it's still, ah, okay, not so bad. So it's about, again, what I thought about action, again, and then creative mornings, then I said, okay, it's, it's about how we take these actions. We're almost at the end. Croissants are waiting. <laughs> um, in my world of dance, and in particular in classical ballet, athletic, athletics uh, and athletic strength meets elegance and beauty. Um, dancers are athletes of God, says Albert Einstein, and then he also says that most of the things... I, so maybe this is not true <laughs> that I just said before. However, um, I hope you can see that, that there is still um, elegance and, and athletic strength and beauty in this game. This is Mr. Co Mr. Uh, Copeland, she's one of ABT's now half black ballerinas and the first uh, classical ballet ballerina of ABT, American Ballet Theatre in, in uh, the States. She's fantastic, she's changing kind of the whole image of what a ballerina is. First of all, she's top heavy, I would say. She's not, maybe not there, maybe, ah, no. I didn't want to put in, she has pictures, if you Google her name, she has pictures on, on the internet that is like, she's almost nude. Very delicately and she's very nicely done, but she's almost nude. Very good ones. I didn't want to put it into this because I actually thought to, 
to take this to somewhere else and I didn't want to be too uh, kind of popular about it. But, uh, but she's, she's beautiful and she's, but she's beautiful on that she could be a supermodel as well, but on, on top of it she chooses to, for the past, I don't know, 20 years or 30, not 30 yet, um, she's choosing to, to do something else with her body and she's choosing with, and with her beauty. It's coming back now, it's, <laughs> it's time to go on, Mate. Um, but then again, athletic strength meets fragility and be, being something really fr fragile, being really fragile, and, but being really, really strong. It is still a hell of a lot of power to do that, what she does here, especially that you really have to look like a million dollar and you have to sell it, that classical ballet that you're very, that it's very easy, that it's very natural. And it's nothing about classical ballet that's natural. It's basic principles is going against the body. It's about turning it out where you can't. It's going up where you wouldn't. It's lifting your legs to places where you cannot. It's standing and doing 10 pirouettes where you cannot, it's where it's impossible. For the lazy ladies and some of the gentlemen, it's standing on your toes that is absolutely not normal on, on a shoe that is this down there, but this would actually allows them to make uh, this further action out there. I think the police is coming now soon. Um, um, they are standing on that to do most of the two and a half hours uh, Swan Lake and they are doing the pirouettes on that. That's why actually they can do so many but uh, that and then there's all these lifts that as a man I can say that this is one of the reasons I guess I stopped dancing because my back uh, just gave in. It's lifting and lifting and lifting the ladies up there and then you still have, they have to look like a million dollar and you have to look like a million dollar. It's still 50 kilos getting up there and flipping and then waiting and, <laughs> bah, and in the end get it down and then this is how it was supposed to be and then you go <laughs> 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 now it's good and all that ta -ta at some point has to get out otherwise you're not going to get a principal contract anywhere but again it's something to do with, with that you really have to be tuned and you really have to go it is like running a marathon or running a, a hundred, 60 meters you just do it for two and a half hours on point shoes um, also Boys do that same thing, so we have to get our legs up high and uh, do that. I didn't bring pictures of me because that would be really not nice. And we can run, like, it's, the girls are still uh, somehow more pretty, and it's this is being in action somehow. This is being in in. It is kind of amazing also that this is what I'm dealing with, and it's, I'm happy about that. But but it's it is a lot about action, and what I want to get to, and this is now the end, is that. In my world and in dance, in dance and in particular in classical ballet, we strive for perfection and we do it with no talking at all. We do it by doing it, doing, we take action. We, it's all about being there, it's all about being in action. Also the way, eight hours a day, is to look like a bird this is one of the most beautiful ballets of George Balanchine. It's called Symphony and Sea. I was this boy, but I didn't want to bring my picture. <laughs> um, it's a beautiful piece. And um, the last sentence is, this is still the same thing. I think it's just New York City Ballet, by the way. Um, maybe I just don't say it. I just click. <laughs> just do it. And this should be the new logo of, of Nike. Um, so just go have a croissant. Thank you very much for coming and listening to all the...